instantaneous velocity more specifically using something called the definition of the derivative. Um, by the way, this might look familiar if you remember way back to the beginning of the year. So, finding the instantaneous rate of change using limits. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pick a point. We're going to pick, let's pick this point right here. We're going to say that we want to find the derivative at that point. That is, we want to find out what the slope is at that point, right? So here's the principle at play. I hope you would agree that that has some sort of x value, and then it has a corresponding y value. But I'm going to write f of x. That is, that is the y value at that point. Now, if I want the instantaneous rate of change, I want it at that point. But we've I talked, intimated this at the, in the last video, is you really need two points. So I'm going to pick a point a little bit farther along for x purposes, say here, right? And I'm going to call that h farther along in x. That is, it's going to be x plus h. Think about it this way. To go from x to x plus h means we've traveled h units that away, right? And what does that mean? That means when I plug in x plus h, remember function notation, this is not f times x, please don't do that to me. That would mean I'm plugging in x plus h, so the y value, if you will, would be f of x plus h. So that means that we have two coordinates. This coordinate right here is x comma whatever f of x is. Now obviously, depending on the x and depending on what the function is, the well, equation, right, that would change. We're trying to do this generally though, which is why we're keeping it in terms of x. This is, well, x plus h, right? So some fixed amount past x. And, and correspondingly, f of x plus h would be that point, right? To find the slope, that is to find the derivative, that is to find the instantaneous rate of change, we simply take f of x plus h minus f of x. You'll see why in just a sec, why I picked that order. What corresponds to f of x plus h? x plus h, right? Minus x, which means that the slope at that point would be that, because x plus h minus x would just be h, because that's the distance travel next, right? Now here's the deal. It gets more accurate if I take that point and I make h smaller and smaller, right? It still has to be two points, but I want to make them as small as possible. So what I'm going to do is take the limit, the limit, as h goes to 0 of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink, and this is kind of like when we were looking at n behavior, we took the limit as x tends towards infinity, or positive or negative infinity. Here we're getting tending towards 0. We're getting really close to 0. We're going to make h itty bitty, really small. And that's going to hopefully make this more accurate. The smaller we make h, that is the distance between the two points. It's still two points because there's still a distance between them but the smaller, the better, okay? So algebraically, it turns out we can manipulate this, and this is something called the derivative, which is a fancy way of saying the instantaneous rate of change. The derivative is indicated by this little prime thingy, prime, right there. So when we say f prime x, we, we're talking about the derivative of the instantaneous rate of change. And this is called the, the uh, limit definition of the derivative. Now, if you remember way back when, that's also known as the difference quotient. So this leads us to, there it is, written so you can actually read it. But that's the limit definition of the derivative, right? So algebraically, we're going to do some manipulation. We've done this before, believe it or not. But hopefully, this will just be a reminder. If not, pay close attention. So if I want to find the derivative of f of x equals x squared. Now I've got a particular function, right? So I want to find f prime of x. And that means it's going to be the limit as h tends towards 0 of f of x plus h. Now here's the deal. f of x plus h is not f times x plus f times h. Please don't do that to me. That means that I'm plugging x plus h in. So that's x plus h squared, right? Okay, ready, set. We're not going to stumble here. That also means that f of x plus h is equal to x plus h times x plus h. 
Most of the problems that people have with this has nothing to do with the quote-unquote calculus nature of it. It has to do with the actually remembering to do your algebra correctly. x plus h times x plus h, x times x, x squared. We get not one, but two xh's. Hopefully you see those, x times h, h times x. When combine them, we get two xh plus h squared, right? So that means that f of x plus h, right, which is what we normally put in there, that's actually x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus, so remember, this is our f of x plus h minus, what is f of x? Now, I'm using brackets, which are fancy parentheses, right? It's just x squared. How do I know that? Because f of x equals x squared. Tells it right there. All over, all over, let's pick a third color, purple. Right? H. Okay. First off, let's get rid of this stray mark and let's make this x actually look like an x. So take in the scenery here, folks. We've got f of x plus h. We've got f of x, right, right there. I'm finding the difference in the y over the difference in the x. And now I'm going to do something called combine like terms. x squared plus 2xh plus x squared minus oh, x squared, x squared. Positive x squared minus x squared. Drum roll. Okay. Someone's going to raise their hand and they're going to ask, but Mr. McGregor, where? Did the x squared go? And the answer is it went bye-bye. Positive x squared minus x squared, cancel. Brace yourselves. Did you know that when you divide something, that is when I have this whole mess being divided by that h, it turns out that I am dividing not one, but both of those things by h, which means I get 2x plus h. Here's how. What is 2xh divided by h? Well, the h is cancel. Now that does not mean that the h's are gone. The h squared is also being divided. Remember this is 2xh over h plus h squared over h. That's the equivalence, okay? Um, you have to be careful when you do this. When you divide, you have to divide everything. So then what is h squared over h? h, what is 2xh? You get the picture. Now, at this point, when we take limits, often limits are just plugging in the value. So in this case, if I were to plug 0 in, what happens? Well, I get 2x plus 0. Now notice, I took the limit, so the little limit thing went away. I just get 2x. That tells us the derivative, f prime of x, lest we forget the derivative. That is also the slope at any point. So for any given x, I can tell you what the slope is, right? Uh, is equal to 2x. Now wait, you say. I, I, when I do the limit, I just plug in the, whatever it is? Yes, but if you look up here, if I were to plug zero in, I'd be dividing by zero, it goes Yep, that's right. So we can't do that right away. That's why we have to algebra it, simplify it so it doesn't go See, no there, right? Let's try another one. It's more complicated, but remember, you can pause this, you can rewind. You'll see what I'm talking about. Okay. G of x equals that. Now, just because it's a G doesn't make any difference. It's all just function notation, just letters, right? If you want to find G prime of x, so to find G prime of x, I'm going to take the limit as h goes to 0 of... Now, here's what I'd recommend you do. I'm going to go ahead and in a separate little space here, I'm going to go ahead and put a little line over here. I'm going to, I'm going to figure out what G of x plus h is, because I know I'm going to have to plug it in, right? So g of x plus h equals, I didn't leave myself enough space, g of x plus h equals, well, it means I plug in x plus h, so 2 times x plus h squared plus 3 times x plus h minus, hey look, I got lucky, minus 2. Now, from the previous, x plus h squared, x plus h squared is equal to two equal to sorry x squared let's not make any stray marks lest we confuse you is equal to x squared plus 2xh plus h squared 
That is worth remembering because it's true, but also it saves you a lot of grief, which means this x plus 8 squared is going to become that, but it's still being multiplied. Watch what I'm doing here. Lots of parentheses for fun for all. All right, h squared plus 3x plus 3h minus 2. Remember, I can distribute. I'm allowed to do that. The algebra is usually what gets people. And I can still distribute here, so cross all three of these. So I'm going to get 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared plus 3, oh my lord, I'm going to die. Look at all that. Now, fortunately, yes, there is a fortunately. Fortunately, we can simplify that. g of x plus h which is what we're trying to get, right? 2x squared, no other x squared, so the 2x squared stays. 2x squared. Plus 4xh, no other 4xh, no other xh's. Plus 2h squared, uh oh, plus 2h squared, plus 3x, plus 3h minus 2. Okay, well, I lied apparently. This is a mess. So, what does this mean? That means I'm going to take that, and then I'm going to subtract that. Now, if you think about it, well, you'll see what I'm talking about here in a sec. So, I'm going to take all of my g of x plus h, and brace yourselves, I'm going to have to make some room here. So, we're going to move you down here, right? And we're going to write this out as 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared plus 3x plus 3h minus 2. Now, like I did here, I'd strongly recommend, right, that you do what I did and kind of do parts of it over in another spot because it can save you, so, save you a lot of grief. Is it so, something else to keep track of? Yes. Now, here is probably, probably, remember I said that algebra will get you, the biggest thing. Minus what? That. But not just part of it, all of it. So notice how I started with some parentheses, meaning I'm subtracting all of 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. Now, if you look at this, I'm going to underline some terms. 2x squared, 2x squared. 3x, 3x. Negative 2, negative 2. But because I'm subtracting, what's going to happen? Well, those are all like terms. There's no other 4xh, there's no other 2h, there's no other h squared, there's no other 3h. But there are all these others, which are going to do what? Cancel. 2x squared minus 2x squared. 3x minus 3x. Negative 2 minus negative 2, right? So what happens in the end? Limit as h goes to 0 of 4xh plus 2h squared plus 3h over h, which, now, I would like to point out in this step that we end up with only terms that have an h in them, which is what we want because what's going to happen is they're going to get canceled when we divide through by this h. So what does that mean? means we end up with 4x, h divided by h, plus 2h, h squared divided by h, plus 3. I think you'd agree if I now then plugged in 0, what will happen is actually a positive thing. So remember, this is g prime of x. And when I plug 0 in, the only place I'm going to plug 0 in here is going to go bye-bye, gone, right? So I'm going to end up with 4x plus 3. 3, and that is what the derivative is. Key thing when you hit this step right here is all the terms that had were just x's got canceled. So every term that was left had an h. So when it divided out, we're good to go. Okay? It takes some chewing over, but I'm sure you can do it.